You know what's so cool about uh, about the kingdom is it's so different than the than the principles and the precepts of the world, you know. And uh, you know, if you want to be great in the world, you got to excel in your in your skill or your gift or your career or whatever. Not too many can excel to greatness as as musicians or as you know as uh, as teachers, different things like that. But in the kingdom of God, it's it's different. And Jesus said in Mark 10, 43, whoever wants to become great among you, all they have to do is be a servant. All you have to do is be a servant to be great in God's eyes. And so what that means is that it's a level, it's a level playing field. Anybody can be great in God's eyes in the kingdom of God. All they have to do is be willing to serve, right? Isn't that great? And so there's a lot of greatness in here today. Man, cool, wow. Man, we're among the greatest, right? So me, Jesus measures our greatness not by our status or title, but by our willing to serve. And so uh, God determines our greatness by not by how many people serve us. Because in the world, it's like you're great if you got all these people serving you. But in the kingdom of God, he says greatness is... How many people you serve, not how many people serve you. It's different, right? It's different. And so so um, there's some characteristics of servants the Bible lays out. And um, I just want to touch on those this morning and get our kind of set our, our, our hearts and our spirits right as we go out. And the first one is this. Servants must have a good attitude. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and it looks like the waitress or the waiter don't want to be there? And like, if you ask them for some water, it, it, they act like you're bothering them. That's not a good attitude, right? And so as servants in the kingdom of God, we don't want to serve. We don't want to go out there in the community and say, I'm going to help you. You know, we don't want to do that. All right. Come on, y'all with me? Philippians 2 says this. How many of you know Jesus is our example? And it says this. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who, although he existed in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness, in the likeness of men, being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Servants are humble and they think of others more than they think of themselves. Again, in the world, it's different. In the kingdom of God, it's different. A servant is humble and they don't focus on themselves. They focus on others. I mean, you know, we're not going to do any good if, if it's all about us today. It's got to be all about others today. Come on, I need a better amen right there. So you can't be full of yourself. You have to empty yourself. And that's what Jesus did. He emptied himself. And so that's what that's the attitude we have to have. And so in Matthew six, Jesus said, when you do good deeds, don't try to show off. If you do, you won't get a reward from your father in heaven. When you give to the poor, don't blow a loud horn. That's what show offs do in the meeting places and on the street corners, because they are always looking for praise. I can assure you that they already have their reward. Now, I want my reward to be from the Lord, not from man. What about you? So we don't show off. We just humble ourselves and just go serve and let the Lord get the reward. Let, let the Lord get the praise. And he said, let me get the praise and you'll get the reward. Amen. How many of you know that we're serving the Lord today? We're serving others, but we're serving the Lord. We got to remember that. That's so uh, anyway. So servants have to have the right attitude. You don't you don't have an attitude about it, right? Hey, can you go do that? That's an attitude. We don't want that today, right? We're driving that out in the name of Jesus, right? Okay, number two, servants must have a big heart. You got to put your heart into it, right? It, it, your heart has to be a part of it. And so um, the, the scripture says in Ephesians 6, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not as men, because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does, whether he is slave or free. Again, the Lord rewards us, but you got to put your heart into it. Again, going back to the restaurant. You know, and you say, hey, uh, could you get me some ketchup? And they and you can tell their heart's not in it. <laughs> right. 
And so as we serve people today, we don't want to act like we'd rather be somewhere else. We want our heart to be in it, right? And so we have to have our heart in it. And uh, to keep your heart right, you got to remember, we're really not serving people today. We're serving the Lord today. And, and that's what the scripture says. Um, it says that you got to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. And so that way, you know, you're not you're not expecting like this huge gratitude from people that you serve, because whether they think it's a great deal that you're helping them or not, it doesn't matter because that's not what we're doing it for. We're doing it because we want to please the master. Right. And so if you if you serve as under the Lord and not to man, then it would be easier to keep a good attitude because it don't matter how they respond. Because, you know, sometimes you try to serve someone, and they got an attitude about you serving them, right? But we're not going to get bothered by that. We're just going to keep our focus, right? Come on, are y'all with me? Amen. And so we need to serve God, or, or we need to serve with a heart of compassion. And, and you know the old adage is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And the Bible says in, in Matthew 9 that, that Jesus, in verse 36, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. He had compassion on them. And so we want to serve out of a heart of compassion and, and just, uh, you know, uh, with a heart that is tender, that is loving, that, that is compassionate, that is merciful, that is kind, that is patient. Are y'all with me? Come on, you feel that coming on you right now? I just sense it. It's just coming on. The Lord is just... He's clothing us with compassion. And that's what the Bible says. Jesus had compassion when he saw the crowd. And as we go serve today, can, can we just ask the Lord for compassion? Amen. And of course, we need to serve the Lord with a heart for souls. You know, really, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make people move over from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Come on, we're trying to just get, encourage them to come, just leave the, the, the kingdom of darkness where Satan is abounding and want them to just move over into the kingdom of light, right? So we need eyes for eternity. And everybody we see today, we need to see that there's a soul inside that person. And we need to be thinking about that, that we, we're trying to just touch their soul. We're trying to touch their spirit, man. And we want them to feel the love of God. Amen. And so we want, that's what we're after. And so, you know, everybody you talk to, be nice, be kind, serve them on all that. But just think about this, man. They, there's a soul that one day is going to spend eternity somewhere. And it'd be great if we get a chance to move them just over closer to the kingdom of God and to the cross. Amen. And so let, listen, one more thing about that is that, you know, don't be bashful. Don't be timid. You know, if you get some conversation going with somebody and it opens up for you to just, you know, ask them, hey, are you a Christian? Or, or maybe that's not the best question. You know, if, if it opens up, you know, just start talking to them about spiritual things. Where do you go to church? What's your spirit? What's your spiritual history? Have you been serving the Lord? You know, just ask them questions. And who knows? You might get a chance. Somebody in here today might get a chance for the first time to lead somebody to Christ. Amen. I tell you what I like to do. I tell you what I like to do thinking about this. Like, you know, some of you I know going to nursing homes and you're just loving up on these old. How many of you know they have souls? You know, they're old souls, but they're souls, right? And, and so, uh, you know, I just like to say, hey, you believe in the Lord? You believe in Jesus? Yeah. Have you ever um, have you ever just surrendered your life to Christ? And most of them say, yeah, well, let me pray with me. Pray this prayer with me. And I just pray, I just lead them in prayer because God knows their heart. Right. And the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Right. And so they can confess their 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 way into eternity. Right. And so uh, so sometimes we uh, we leave fruit on the trees because we're too timid. We're too, we're too uh, afraid. But listen, the worst thing that can happen is somebody tell you, no, I don't want you to pray. But not too many people will tell you that, right? Y'all with me? Say amen. amen. All right, so you need to have a heart, a big heart, a loving heart, a compassionate heart. And you need to have a heart for souls. Amen. All right, and so, um, and so uh, we, need, we need the Lord's help. We need a heart. That depends on the Lord. How many of you know, without the Lord's help, all we're going to do is do good deeds, but it's not going to make a difference one iota for eternity. So we need the Lord's. How many of you feel you need the Lord's help? 
And so remember Acts chapter 1, you will receive, I like the, the uh, new, the NLT, it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We need God's power to do God's work. And it's His Spirit that works through us that touches other people. You know, you can, you can touch somebody's mind when you just use your hand. But whenever you use the Spirit of God to touch people, it touches their spirit, not their head. And we're trying to touch their spirit, right? Amen. Come on. We need God's power. We need God's grace. We need God's Spirit. We need, listen, the fruit of the Spirit, right? The gifts of the Spirit, right? It's all about the Spirit. And so if God empowers us, we can make a big difference today. And so, you know, we've already done some tremendous work. We've been fasting, we've been praying, and we've been asking God to put His hand on us, right? And I believe that God is going to answer our prayer and He's going to do that. And so I, I want to just take a moment now and just pray and just pray. And then we're going to take a picture and then we're going to divide up and we're going to head out into the highways and the byways and we're going to compel them to come into the kingdom. Y'all ready? Why don't you just stand with me and, and let's just, uh, we need God's help. You know, the Bible says that his grace is sufficient. And Paul said, I found out whenever I'm weak, he is strong. So some of you may be a little nervous. You may have a lot of anxiety and you feel a little weakened. You're in a good place to experience the grace of God in an extraordinary way. Amen. So now listen, if you have the liberty and the freedom, why don't you just lift your hands like this? This is a sign of surrender, a sign of dependence. And we're saying, God, we need you today. We need your help. We need your power. We need your presence. We need your spirit. We need your grace. Thank you, Lord God, for just coming right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for just coming and just empowering and feeling, Lord, every heart and every life. Come on, just begin to cry out to God. God, we want to make a difference. Lord, we don't want to just clean houses. We don't want to just, just pat people on the back. We want to see eternity change. We want to see lives change. We want to see lives touched and blessed of God. Lord, we want to see hearts, Lord, compelled to come in to the kingdom of God. And Lord, we can't do that. Lord, you said that we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. Lord, we need your grace. We need your power. We need your presence. We need your spirit today. Come on, just begin to cry out. Lord, we say come. Lord, we say open up doors even now. Lord, we say make way even now. Lord, we say right now. Lord, give us divine appointments. Lord, give us divine appointments. Lord, let somebody be walking right in our path right when we get there. Lord, we pray that you would just orchestrate conversations and that you would just give us receptive hearts, receptive hearts that are open. Lord, we pray right now that you would just break the power of fear, that you would break the power of fear off of people's lives in the name of Jesus. We say drive out fear out of us and drive out fear out of the people we're going to be serving. Lord, we pray that you would just break the power power of fear and that you would just overcome it with the love of God because perfect love cast out fear. Thank you, Lord. Perfect love cast out fear. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Come, come, Lord. Come on, let's pray. Let's do warfare for a minute. Lord, we declare that souls are coming in, that lives are being changed, that, Lord, it's going to have an eternal impact on the people that we serve. Lord, that people, administration of places that we're going into, that their lives will be touched, that their hearts will be won. Lord, we're believing God for the favor of God, the anointing of God, the grace of God. We bind up the powers of darkness. We bind up demonic forces that are holding people in hostage and in bondage. We pull down the blinders off the minds and the hearts of the unbelieving. And Lord, we're believing that miracles are going to take place today. We're believing that people are going to be here.